Who are the peoples who made Scotland? In the 21st century, people all over the world claim Scottish descent. But Scotland's not a static thing that had always been there, whose culture's homogeneous and whose unity's been eternal. The truth is much more complicated than that. Now, an in-depth examination would take smarter people than me, a library of books and a horde of scribes taking notes from angels, fairies, gods of Valhalla and men of old. But I'm going to help dip our toes into the water with a series of short videos looking at the five peoples who made Scotland. This is the episode of the people who gave us their name. The Scots. If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand side of the screen. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Scotland was forged out of five peoples. The Picts, the Vikings, the Britons, the Angles and of course, the Scots. The story goes that in the 5th century AD, Fergus Mor McKerk came from the north of what we call Ireland, crossed the Irish Sea and made Scotland's western seaboard the coast of the Gael. Error Goyle. You might say, Argyle. This act by our founding fathers what created the sea kingdom of Dalriada, which stretched from the north of one island to the west of another and encompassed those in between. Of course, in the time of the giants, there was a causeway across that narrow sea, but Fergus had to come by boat. In truth, the story of Fergus is never mentioned until the 10th century, 500 years after his supposed existence. Now, earlier in the 8th century, the Northumbrian cleric and historian Bede told a similar story, but he gave the name of King Ruda as the man who gave his name to Dalriada. Maybe we need to do a bit more digging. Archaeologists have done some digging here. This is Dunad. This is the most important hill fort in this land of Gales. Before the birth of Jesus Christ, before the Romans came, this rocky outcrop, surrounded by boggy ground, has been providing a secure living location for those at its summit. From later habitation, archaeologists have found glassware, metalwork and moulds for brooch making, military equipment and more and more of Gaulish wine than just about anywhere else. From this hilltop, important people traded far and near. But how did this kingdom of Dalriada come to be? If not Fergus or Ruda, then Huda. I'm sorry about that. Archaeologists and linguists say that if there was a migration of people from across the Irish Sea, then they would expect that at the time, ring forts typical on the island of Ireland would start appearing here in Argyll. The linguistic basis of place names would have suddenly changed, and it would have included blended names with both languages in them. It was the kind of thing that you saw when the Angles and the Saxons displaced the Britons further south, or the Gaels later travelled to the east across Scotland. But apparently, none of that happens. In fact, much earlier, the Romans had complained about both Scotti, pirates speaking the Gallic tongue, and Picti, painted people speaking a Brythonic language. They were different peoples acting in cooperation to raid south of Hadrian's Wall. So the Romans seem to have seen two distinctive peoples. And that was well before the famous Fergus McKerk. Now, if you want a more detailed examination, you're going to have to read Pickland to Alipa by Alec Wolfe, or The Makers of Scotland by Tim Clarkson, or even Picts, Gales and Scots by Sally Foster. Now, of course, there are other books, but there are links to these ones in the description below. It seems that there's a more likely story. That many years earlier, before the Romans coined the terms Picti or Scotti, scattered tribes of Britons existed throughout what we now call Scotland. These tribes would have had many different names. They probably didn't see themselves as a single people. Here, the people looked east and there would have been mountains between them and the other Brythonic speaking cousins on this island. They looked west and they saw the shore and islands beyond. We call them Isla, Jura, Mull and Ireland. 
They were easily reached across narrow waterways, trade routes to their goidelic speaking cousins. It was natural that trade and exchange of culture would happen in that direction. Now, if that's the case, then simple trade and social exchange brought Goidelic Celtic language, so that by the time that Fergus McKerk was ever thought of, the Romans had already noticed the change. And there are stone monuments in this very glen that show similarities to Irish designs back to the Bronze Age. It's even been suggested that the story of Fergus McKerk was invented to justify Dalriadan kings from here in Argyle crossing to make claims in the other direction. What are you talking about? These lands have always been ours, right back to when Fergus McKerk came from here to found our colony in Argyle. Aye, Fergus. Don't tell me you've forgotten King Fergus. He was always sitting on that big stone that he walked about with. The truth is, that people would have gone in both directions, this way and that, over the narrow waterways that defined Dalriada. Over time, this side developed into three main clans or kin groups, with a fourth coming later. The Kennel and Gabran in Kintyre, the Kennel Nungus in Isla and Jura, the Kennel Lorne in Lorne, Mull and Arden Murchin, and the Kennel and Congal in Cowell and Butte. Each claimed descent from their own forebear, whose name is now etched into the land. One way or another, the Scottish and the Irish branches of this Dalriadan family split and went their own ways. Now, it might have been part of a big meeting near Limavady in the 6th century that was attended by St Columba, Aidan McGabran and the High King of Ireland, no less. In case you've never watched a video about St Columba, here's one I've made earlier. Unlike Fergus McKerk, Columba was real. He'd crossed from the Irishy part of Dalriada to the Scottishy bit to minister to now Christian Gaels, and legend has it to convert the Picts. In 574 AD, when he laid his hands on the head of Aidan McGabran at Iona, Columba was the first cleric to preside over a Christian ceremony inaugurating a Scottish Dalriadan king but there would have been an equivalent pagan ceremony here on this hill, where people of importance would have gathered inside the walls of a hilltop stronghold just below the citadel, and Aidan McGabran, like many before him, would have placed his foot in this hollow carved out for the purpose. Now, the King of Scots joined the very rock of the land. And this link between king and stone and church would be made by many more Scottish kings for generations to come as they sat on the stone of destiny at Schoon. But this is where it had its origins. Whatever happened at the big meeting at Limavady, it seemed to set Aidan McGabran free. He headed south and east and subdued the Britons and took tribute right across to the edge of Perthshire which must have scared the bejesus out of the Picts. Having consolidated control and submission of the Eastern Britons, he then raided Western Britons at Dumbarton. Gradually, Aidan was spreading the influence of the Gales of Dalriada. In 598, he was into Pictish territory proper. Aidan may have suffered a defeat and lost two of his sons at a battle with the Picts and Angus, but the Scots of Dalriada were still a power to be reckoned with. And then there was a power rising in the southeast. Now, Aidan controlled the territory of the Britons in their north and west, but the Anglo Saxon king Aethelfrith was selling them coke and hash from the southeast. Bada bing, bada boom. The showdown was at Degestain, which was somewhere east of Glasgow and north of Newcastle, west of Edinburgh, but... OK, we don't know where it is, right? The point is that Aidan was defeated. The Angle Aethelfrith was now the top dog, and the Scots retreated back to Dalriada. They'd reached their high watermark. At least for now. If you want to understand more about the peoples of Scotland and how it was formed, then click the link coming up on screen now. In the meantime, I'm in Dawkins, Gumbi, Lama, Alive. Cheerio and Rasta.